Hi, this is Scott with Spectre Gear. Once again, it's Wednesday. Of course, that means it's Wheel Gun Wednesday. And of course, that means it's time for another Tactical Revolver Pro Tip video. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is tactical reloads with revolvers. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term tactical reload, what that is is a reloading technique to bring a partially depleted weapon up to full capacity versus an emergency or speed reload where you basically are working from an empty weapon. Um, the idea, if it, as it's carried out with, a, with an auto loader, would be to first extract a full magazine and get it ready to load in, partially eject the magazine out of the out of the uh, auto loader, trap that magazine between your ring and little finger, extract it out, load a full mag in, good to go. You're topped off and ready. With a revolver it's a very different process, but it's just as important because the idea here is, and how this is used, is you generally want to top your weapon off and perform a tactical reload. When you're getting ready to emerge from cover or move to another position, that's a good example. Uh, or at any time in the gunfight where there's a lull that's uh, and, and it's safe enough to do so, uh, just get that weapon all the way up to all, all the way topped off to full capacity. And where why it's so important with the revolvers is you're you know you're talking you're talking weapons that hold five six rounds. Um, in some cases seven, in extreme cases eight, but we're not talking high capacity weapons here. So when you've partially depleted this weapon, you've actually dramatically depleted the weapon. So firing half of the rounds in the cylinder only leaves you with two to three. So uh, it's a good idea to top that off if you can and not sacrifice those critical speed loaders that may be needed later when you have to do a true emergency reload. So. Here's how it's done, and, and before I get to that, let me tell you kind of a humorous story that kind of prompted me to do this video. I was thinking of this the other day, but uh, many years ago I was attending a CCW class that was being taught by a law enforcement firearms instructor, and he was uh, a fairly recently certified law enforcement firearms instructor and really didn't have a whole lot of experience with revolvers at all. Didn't know much about them at all. And that's kind of a common situation. Uh, it's been many, 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 many years since revolvers were commonplace within law enforcement circles. So they don't certify their instructors really all that much to cover uh, the field of revolvers. If anything, they would talk about maybe J-frame snub noses as backups, uh, and that would be at advanced firearms instructor level. So we're at the range, and, and this guy was, and, and for a CCW class, this is actually a pretty good class because he was having us actually do some genuine shooting drills. And one of the things he was doing, uh, or started off doing, was uh, talking about tactical reloads. And he turns to me, because I, I was obviously working with revolvers in the class, and he says, hey, you don't need to worry about this. This is kind of an auto loader thing. There's really not a way to do this with a revolver. And I went, nah, I don't I don't think so. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and play along. I'm your huckleberry. So uh, we, we get up online and the drill was you fire two rounds, perform a tack reload, fire two more rounds, holster up, or do another tack reload, holster up, and you're good to go. So um, I go ahead and come up online. And when I fire my first two rounds, I notice that the instructors were all looking in my direction. And here's exactly what I did, and this is the demonstration of how to do a tactical reload with a revolver. So I opened the cylinder, and all I did was I just simply slightly press the ejector rod and then release it. Now in doing so, what will happen is the unfired rounds will fall back into the charge holes of the cylinder. But the fired rounds, because they've expanded under the pressure of being fired, will grip the chamber or charge hole uh, in the cylinder and it'll create some drag. So when you release those those unfired rounds and they drop back in place into the charge holes, these rounds will kind of stick out a little bit. Uh, there'll be some rare instances where they don't, but uh, I don't run across that all that often. Usually they're going to stick up pretty nicely. And that allows you, gives you a good tactile feel, a good visual impression of exactly where these are at. You can also look for primers as well. But it's, it's best to kind of keep your head on a swivel. So anything that is a, a tactile clue is a, is a better tactic and technique. So these rounds kind of stick up. And all you simply do is just pluck them out, throw them aside. You're done with those. And from either shell loops that might be on your belt or the best method, something like a speed strip, you just come up, two rounds, peel off, and close up. And you, the revolver is now topped off. It's now holding six rounds, and you are good to go. So let me show you that one more time. I'll have to set this up, so let me extract those out. And oh, by the way, if you're going to be doing a, a lot of work, doing reloading drills and practice uh, sessions with, with your revolver that involves 
uh, things like running speed loaders and, and even with auto loaders, as a matter of fact, if you're going to be doing any chambering, best to do it with dummy rounds. I bought these from Brownells. They're actually pieces of ammunition just minus the uh, minus the primer, minus the powder, powder the bullet is actually seated in there, and it is in fact a lead bullet. Um, but these are inert dummy rounds, so it's good to get those because they're, you know, I've had a number of cases over the years where I've had guys that I knew that were practicing reloading drills. And sure enough, at some point, they just come up and, and just as an auto reflex, bang, bang, two rounds right into their backstop. So hopefully their backstop is some body armor or something that'll stop a bullet. But um, yeah, you want to watch for that. So use your practice ammo. So let me load these back in. So once again, you fired a couple of rounds, you open your cylinder, hit your extract or your ejector rod, a couple of rounds stick out high because of dragging on the cylinder, pluck them out, load two in from the speed strip, peel it off, close it up, and actually not a doesn't take a heck of a lot of time to do. And as I said, now it brings the the uh, the revolver fully up to capacity and you are ready to go. So that's a cool tactic and uh, I recommend that anybody that's carrying a revolver, whether you carry speed loaders or speed strips, always carry a speed strip, period. So my loadout is always two uh, comp one or comp two speed or speed loaders and at least one speed strip. Often it's two. Uh, so the, the speed strips are nice. They tuck right into a pocket. I usually carry one of these in my right front pocket at all times, and then sometimes I might throw a second one in there if I want to kind of up the numbers just a little bit. So with that, I'll go ahead and bring it to a close at this point. Thank you for watching and or listening, and if you're interested in any of our tactical revolver accessories, such as our speed loader pouches, please uh, be sure to check out our website at spectregear.com. Uh, so with that, I will, again, thank you for watching and or listening. Have a wonderful day.